Tick tock, says the clock, it's 12 of the night. The new year's here and the stars are bright. The old year's gone, he's tired and worn. Christmas is past, the tree all shorn. The star children come in the dead of night, like three wise men bringing the light. Tick tock, says the clock, the new year's come. Good year to you all until the next to come. I find that with the new year season comes a good time for reflection. With the feeling of a new year and a new decade, it's a perfect time to assess the past year, maybe get organized and begin on improving certain areas of our homeschool and getting in the practice towards new intentions or goals. So I thought I'd share what this looked like for me. And for me, it was decluttering, organizing, and creating a new flow to certain areas of our day. Our morning time is key to setting the tone for our homeschool day. So I made a space for a new morning or circle time meeting area. I repurposed an old blanket ladder to hold our candles for our nature table, our poems, and morning songs. I cleared out a shelf and it now holds our calendar, which is a big part of our circle morning time, our seasonal nature display, and other seasonal nature finds and loose parts we use daily. Whereas before, I had our materials and resources spread out through the schoolroom. Now I've organized all of these opening activities and resources to this area and it just feels organic this way. Our nature finds are with our nature table display. Our loose parts, which are often paired with each other, are all on the shelf and used with various wooden bowls and trays and those are also found here. This shelf just makes sense. I've mentioned in the past that I don't homeschool plan, more so log and follow a loop schedule for core subjects. And we still do this, but Bella was needing a visual rhythm to her day. So I used the family calendar set from Hearth Magic and a photo display from Amazon. Our days already generally follow this flow, but now Bella can have a visual plan for her week. We do circle time daily, movement after that, then our lesson, which is core, still on a looping schedule. Lunchtime, of course, is daily, then a special activity on each day, like tea time on Monday, form drawing on Tuesday, and so on. Outside time is essential for our everyday, and finally, Bella's daily chore, which mostly consists of caring for our pets. Over the past few months, I've acquired more Waldorf curriculum and resources, and so I've now organized them all together into these two cubbies. Watercolor paper and the Strathmore drawing pads we use as main lesson books. Beginner recorder uh, by Oak Meadow, my working through LMNOP teacher's manual, and the Good and the Beautiful Arts and Crafts uh, book, not necessarily Waldorf, but it makes sense to store here. In here, I'm storing creative form drawing by Angela Lord, uh, just various arts and crafts books, which again makes sense to store here. Um, coloring with block crayons. A darling resource I found for finger plays for nursery. Transparent window scenes through the yearbook, which you guys have seen. More form drawing. These are flashcards from Hearth Magic for grades 1 through 4th grade. And our window star kite paper. Here we have a few guides on fairy tales. Um, some winter or seasonal resources from Hearth Magic and her circle time sets as well. Next to that cubby, I have our uh, family learning literature guides from Hearth Magic and some books we use daily, LMNOP, an alphabet book, King Maximo and the Number Knights, Pocket Full of Posies, which is a sweet book on nursery rhymes. Um, we're currently reading Where the Wild Things Are. We've actually read that a few times and Charlotte's Web, which we also finished. 
If you haven't heard of Hearth Magic Resources, let me enlighten you on this beauty. So I am collaborating with Amber over at Hearth Magic. Um, I guess we can call it brand representation if we want to label it. But basically, she's given me access to a one-year membership subscription uh, to her Facebook group where I get to be part of the wonderful Waldorf homeschool community she has there along with access to Google Documents to her Waldorf-inspired early childhood curriculum and other resources. The Amber's Literature Learning Guides are just the biggest gems. I'm getting a little deep here, but I do have a testimony that I feel led to share. So praying over our homeschool, I've asked the Lord to equip me with a literature-heavy influence for our school year. Bella is on the cusp of being an early reader, to a fluent reader and I know that where I lack was in more reading time together or read alouds. I lack here because, and I hate to admit this, uh, but I'm not an avid reader myself. Um, this isn't something my family did uh, together for my childhood. And as an adult, I do enjoy reading more, but I think my issue comes in juggling too many books at a time. Anyway, I went to the Lord and asked that he guides me and equips me to change this cycle. And guess what? We were blessed with all of these beautiful literature learning guide resources. Head over to the Hearth Magic Etsy shop and you'll see that Amber has created about 15 learning guides to just beautiful literature classics. These are just the ones that I've printed and prepared for the next season or two similar to the Charlotte's Web learning guide that I walked you through in my last video. There are uh, guided activities like crafts, handwork, uh, main lessons, nature studies, games, journaling, and more through each chapter to these classics. I love that through these guides, we are not just studying literature. So language arts, reading fluency, vocabulary, spelling, narration, but also handwriting, geography, cultural studies, history, math, nature, art. If our learning guides are all that we accomplish in a school year, I'd be more than okay with that. If you're only going to pick out one resource from this video, which will be hard to do, I'd recommend these learning guides. Amber also offers a yearly subscription to only her family learning guides, which is an extraordinary deal. Personally, I want to express my gratitude to Amber for blessing us with this beautiful resource and helping our family come together in a love for our good and beautiful children's literature. Okay, moving on to another resource I've prepared, uh, which is the Adventures Through the Fairy Tales, a first grade learning guide inspired by the fairy tales written by the Grimm's brothers, which is traditionally how the fairy tales are told in Waldorf education. The fairy tale story and a three-day guide to follow. Uh, so day one, you tell the story followed by three activities um, like baking a honey bear buns and making rose apple tea. Day two, retelling the story and three more activities, uh, like in this case, creating a helping chart. Day three, which is retelling the story, which is optional, and then more activities. Uh, some of the activities suggested are baking, handwork, poems, tongue twisters, main lesson pages and practicing uh, letter sounds, games, songs, scavenger hunts, word families, and nature studies. Circle time sets, which are essential uh, to our circle time and in um, Waldorf early education. Uh, I believe I have six prepared in this binder so far. With each set, you get, of course, the story, um, additional songs and poems, tongue twisters, uh, clip art to make story time puppets, 
Amber also offers a yearly subscription to her circle time sets. So I'll link all of this information uh, in the description box below along with a coupon code Amber so generously created for you guys. With the VIP yearly membership, you also have access to all the smaller seasonal sets. Uh, some stuff you saw displayed uh, in our circle time or morning time area uh, and others I've organized into our winter binder. This is a winter overview planning page she's already created for you using her resources. So for example, December, St. Nicholas, uh, St. Lucia, Gingerbread Story Tales, Winter Solstice, and Christmas. For January, you can study winter tales like The Three Kings, The Mitten Circle Time Set, When Winter Comes, and Owl Moon. In February, there's Candlemas, The Velveteen Rabbit, Mother Earth, and The Root Children, and The Bag of Warmth. So that's the overview for the season. Furthermore, here is the week-by-week -week breakdown for each month. So for example, in December week one, she suggests that you make a dough advent spiral, tell the St. Nicholas story, string popcorn garland, and do a secret service for someone. Amber has created several sets of planning resources, including a complete digital download planner, not just for homeschooling, but for the home, a family calendar, rhythm cards, and uh, calendar wheels, and so many other resources that you get access to through the yearly membership, or you can check out individually on her Etsy shop. Here is an example of the poetry and handwriting sets for winter. My printer messed this one up. Uh, FYI, it looks much prettier. Several coloring pages for each season. Um, another seasonal set I printed and I'm getting ready to prepare is Waiting for Spring. And this is an easy reader created by Amber. So I'm going to cut and paste this set into this blank book, uh, which I find at Target Bullseye. Beautiful clip art here is to make one of those window calendars like the one I featured in the Charlotte's Web video. She has several of these window calendars through the seasons. I just haven't had a chance to prepare this one. You saw some of the winter nature table cards on display already, but these are some extras that haven't made it to our nature shelf yet. Pages for journaling. And this set uh, looks like a lot of fun. I can't wait until we get around to it, but it is a paper doll craft inspired by the Sarah's Silks dress ups. I've also prepared several sets for our geography shelf. So for example, in the Europe binder, I organized the Scandinavian Christmas guide. In my North America binder, this is a new set she created inspired by the Editrad route in Alaska. For Africa, the giant yam folktale and a set on hieroglyphics. And there are also several resources uh, for Asia on the Chinese New Year, which would be perfect for this weekend. So here I have some of the flashcard resources that I've downloaded through your, the yearly membership. Um, German color flashcards that will also live on our geography shelf along with Spanish colors and family members in German. More of the year nature table cards and you guys her artwork is just stunning. You saw this winter set specifically earlier in the video, but these are verses and poem cards. And again, she has these for all through the seasons. And the beautiful calendar wheels that Amber's created, I've only printed off two. We have the weather wheel and the year of Waldorf festivals. 
Amber also created four sets of form drawing flashcards for grades one through four, but I've only prepared three, so that's what I have to show here. And if you didn't know, form drawing um, is a completely new subject that was created by Rudolf Steiner, the creator and founder of Waldorf Education. It's taught in grades one to five, and essentially it's freehand drawing um, for forms like lines, patterns, and other structures. It's also a form of meditation and an approach to geometry. And some of my favorite flashcards sets for last, um, her affirmation flashcards are beautiful, courage cards, and the alphabet flashcards are a big hit with my littles. So you guys, today I've only shared what I've printed and prepared and what I'm implementing in our homeschool within the next few seasons, but I highly recommend you check out Hearth Magic on Etsy and see for yourself the multitude of beautiful resources you get access with the various memberships that she has to offer. I hope that today's video serves you in one way or another, and if it did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. As always, thank you for your love. Mm -hmm.